This lesson is going to discuss covalent bonds. So covalent bonds typically form between two non-metal atoms. And if you have a compound that contains a group of non-metals and they have a known formula and they're covalently bonded together, the correct term for them is a molecule or a molecular compound. So molecular compounds contain covalent bonds. So how does a covalent bond form? Well, as the two atoms approach one another, their positively charged nuclei are repelling each other. I mean, the two nuclei are repelling and all their electrons are repelling each other. And then the positively charged nuclei and the negative electrons are attracting one another. So there's um, repulsion going on and attraction going on at the same time. And at some point, those two forces are going to balance out. The repulsion and the attraction will be balanced and a chemical bond can be formed. So a covalent bond forms when two atoms share electrons in order to obtain a stable octet. And there's, in that bond, there ends up being an electrostatic attraction between those shared electrons, which exists between the two nuclei. So the shared electrons are being attracted to both nuclei, uh, and that's what holds the bond together. And when you're forming covalent bonds, it, you're only likely to use unpaired electrons to form the initial bond. So let's look at some examples. So if we look at chlorine gas, which is two chlorine atoms, so these are the Lewis diagrams for chlorine atoms, um, and you'll notice I've placed the unpaired electrons sort of close together because they're the ones that are going to be involved, and I've denoted the two chlorines with different symbols for the electrons just so we can keep them straight. So each chlorine atom needs to share one electron and then it would be happy. It would have a full valence shell. So they're going to share their electrons. And when they do that, those two electrons come between the two atoms and now they both have a full valence shell of eight. Right? That chlorine has eight. This chlorine has eight. So when one pair of electrons is shared, this is the formation of a single bond. And you can also represent a single bond just with a single line. So when you're drawing these Lewis diagrams, you can either put the electrons, the, the pair of electrons as a bond, or you can just draw the line. So let's look at another example, oxygen gas. So here are two oxygen atoms. So each oxygen atom has six valence electrons, which means it wants two more to be stable. So it's going to have to share two. So they're going to share their two electrons with each other. Those electrons are going to come in between the two atoms to form a bond. This oxygen now has eight. This oxygen now has eight. When there's two electron pairs being shared, this is a double bond. And you can also represent a double bond with a double line. Now, you'll notice when I move those electrons in between the two atoms, I move the other electrons around a bit. Right? So they're over like this. I didn't leave them down. Uh, and that's because that's not really a good representation of how the molecule is structured. Okay, so what happens is those non-bonding electron pairs want to get as far away from each other as possible. So when you're drawing them, you want to um, put them all around this, uh, around as far as they can go around the symbol. So another example is nitrogen gas. So here we have our two nitrogen atoms. Each nitrogen atom has five valence electrons, so it needs three more. So it's going to share those three that are not paired. And they're going to move in between. This nitrogen now has eight. This nitrogen now has eight. So when you're sharing three pairs of electrons, as you might have guessed, this is called a triple bond. And you can also represent a triple bond with a triple line. 
So in these structures, each line, when you see lines, that represents two electrons. So in a triple bond, there are six electrons involved, three pairs. So let's talk about those pairs a little bit more. Okay, when you have a, a final molecule, you're rarely going to see unpaired electrons because unpaired electrons are not stable. They want a partner. Uh, so they don't occur because that wouldn't be a stable molecule. So all those paired electrons can be classified in two ways. So you've, you've either got a bonding pair, which is a pair of electrons shared between two atoms, or you have what's called a lone pair. These are electrons that are not part of a bond. So if we look at an example, so this is NH3 or ammonia. This is the Lewis diagram for ammonia. So the electrons that are between two atoms, those are the bonding pairs. And then this particular molecule has one lone pair. So let's talk about how we can draw Lewis structures for molecules that aren't quite as simple as the ones we've done so far. So you can use a Lewis structure to represent any molecule. So we're going to go through a couple examples. So the first one we're going to do is ammonia, which was just shown to you on the last slide, but we'll talk about how we get to that result. Okay, so there's some steps you can follow. So the first thing you want to do is determine how many valence electrons there are in each atom, and then add them all up to find out how many electrons you have to work with. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, and there are three hydrogens. So the hydrogens together bring three valence electrons. So in total, for this molecule, we have eight valence electrons. Next thing you're going to do is draw a skeleton structure. And you're going to put the element that needs to form the most bonds, or needs the most electrons, in the middle. Right? So we just said that nitrogen had five valence electrons, which means it needs three more. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, and hydrogen is a unique case in that it only needs two to be stable. So each hydrogen needs one more electron. So nitrogen is the one that needs the most electrons, so it's going to go in the center and then the hydrogens will go around it. Okay, so this is our skeleton structure. Now we're gonna start making bonds and putting in electrons. So we've put the skeleton structure, so now we need to stick it together. So we're gonna put electrons between each pair of atoms to create a single bond. So we start with single bonds. So we're gonna put a pair in there, in there, and in there. Okay, so now those atoms are bonded together. And then we take a count of electrons. We have eight electrons. That's how many came from each atom. We've used six. So we've got two left that we have to put somewhere. So the next step is that you begin with the terminal atoms. So those are the ones not in the center. And you're going to add electrons to each atom to give it an octet, or in the case of hydrogen only needs two, until you run out of electrons. So we're going to check the terminal atoms. So that hydrogen is fine, it's got two electrons, that hydrogen is fine, and that hydrogen is fine. But nitrogen only has six, so it's not stable. Nitrogen has six, so it needs two more. Luckily, we have two more, because we had eight. So we're going to give them to nitrogen. Now nitrogen is happy. We can do a final check, right? We started with eight electrons, we've used eight electrons, so there is the final Lewis structure for ammonia. Okay, let's look at another example. So first step, determine how many valence electrons there are in each atom, and then add them up. So carbon comes with four, and oxygen, each oxygen comes with six. And there are two oxygens, so there's 12 valence electrons coming from the oxygens. So you add those up, so we're working with 16 valence electrons in the final structure. So now we're going to draw our skeleton structure with the element that needs to form the most bonds in the middle. So carbon needs four electrons because it has four already. Oxygen has six, so it needs two more. So carbon's the one that needs the most, so it's going to go in the middle 
and the oxygens on either side. So then the next step was to place a bonding pair of electrons between each of the adjacent atoms to create single bonds. So we're going to put those in there. Okay, now our molecule is minimally bonded together. So we have 16 electrons we've now used four. So we've got 12 left. And now, so now we have to start giving these atoms their stable octets. And so we start on the outside. So we start with oxygen. Each oxygen has two. So it's going to need six more. So we're going to place those around the oxygen. So we've used up 12 more electrons and we'd already used four. So we're at 16. So we're out. There are no more electrons left. Okay, that's all we're allowed. Can't just pull them out of nowhere. So when you come to this situation where the carbon, the oxygen and the, the two oxygens are fine, they're stable, but the carbon is not, right? It only has four electrons. It does not like that. So now there's an extra step. So if the central atom has fewer electrons than an octet, you're going to take lone pairs from the outside terminal atoms to form multiple bonds, so a double bond or a triple bond, and to, in order to give that central atom an octet. So what we can do is we can move one pair of electrons from the one oxygen in and a pair of electrons from the other oxygen in to make it look like that. Now we check that all atoms have an octet, right? Oxygen's good. Carbon's got eight. This oxygen has eight. And notice how those uh, oxygen electrons have been rotated a little bit to be further apart. So that was the final structure for carbon dioxide.